It's been a while since I've made a video, and there's no time like the present. So welcome to installment one of Secrets of Clawhammer Banjo. When I get a new student, which is from time to time, a new banjo student who wants to learn more about Clawhammer Banjo, I find that their previous teacher or instruction materials that they were using, or whatever it was, never mention certain things that are um, things I do all the time. And so I want to touch on these things. And today the topic is the fifth fret. That's, you can always know which is the fifth fret because you'll find the fifth string peg nearby. Come on. There we go. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Generally, most claw hammer banjo players, you, if you look at their technique, they'll, they'll use the fifth fret on the first string. In G tuning, they'll get a G there. Sometimes they'll get that on the open first string. The only time you actually play the fifth string on a downbeat was when it's a melody note, right? Or, but you might want to get it here. But I use the second string, the third string, and the fourth string at fret five. It's still first position, in my way of thinking. So for instance, let's take a look at Sourwood Mountain. Real basic way of doing it. Can you see my hands? Everything on the second fret. But there's a nice little figure. I can drop my thumb there too. Now I could go. No, I can't get it any other way. getting E, fret 2 on the first string, fret 5 on the second string. I'm getting it here. So many other ways, let's see, um, the old bunch of keys. But we can also get the E here. And actually we can get C at the fret. Okay, um, take a look at um, the oldest tune I know is probably Stony Point, or got so many names, Wild Horse, you know, Buck Creek Gals. So I find the easiest way to play it and the most flowing is again to use the fifth fret. tried it every way. Uh, well, I won't go through the whole catalog. This is the easy way, and it sounds good. Please let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow, or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, or this is helpful. Let's take a look at um, the Sandy Boys. Now here, I'm going to use the C sometimes here and sometimes here, according to what comes before and after. So the high part of the Sandy Boys starts here. I'm going to get that note 
here on fret 6 on the second string. So everything's in a two fret area. second part of the low part that Edden Hammonds plays on the fiddle. Here I'll play C down here. But... Look, Ma, no hand, no left hand. And I could go. So do this. That way the B string rings a little longer. so easy and it sounds so nice. I could get it here but it would be harder and it would sound more pingy and here it's a little more mellow. What about G here? If I can get it here on the open string I'll do that. But um, I really like how Tommy Jarrell fiddles. Um, what do you call that? June Apple. I was trying to get that on the banjo. It's a paraphrase, it's not exactly what he does on the fiddle. But. These are um, some fifth fret ideas that I don't see too many or any other banjo players doing. They probably are. I'm just not seeing it. Um, that's that's all for today. That's installment number one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.